This is Lesson 16, The Real Deal. Meet Xu Xing, born in Xingxiang, China in 1969. Xu Xing was from a poor family. Unlike some of the other scientists we have read about, he didn't grow up with a deep fascination with dinosaurs. In fact, he hadn't even heard about dinosaurs until he went to Peking University in Beijing. He was originally hoping to be a software designer. However, things didn't turn out exactly as he had planned. For some at Peking University and select other universities in China, courses of study are chosen by a lottery system. <clears throat> this is to help make sure that certain faculties don't get overwhelmed while others have no students. Xing was assigned paleontology, something he had no interest in and no knowledge about. Thankfully, he learned to appreciate fossils and found he was well-suited for his appointed job. He graduated in 1995 and works to this day for the Beijing Institute of Vertebrae Paleontologist and Paleoanthropology. Inspired by Roy Chapman Andrews, Xu was determined to explore new areas in China where no one had searched before. His fossil hunting style was successful, and his efforts put China on the world map, both for its discovery and its contributions to the field. In fact, Xu had found and named more new species than anyone else alive at the time of this publication. He has risen to be one of the most world-renowned paleontologists of the 21st century and has made his country proud. After he graduated, he went on several expeditions into the desert with very little funding and pre poor supplies. It was on one of these early trips that he heard about a fossil dig up by a farmer that was one of the first known dinosaurs found with feathers, now naming, now named the Cynosaurus This led him to the theory that birds descended from dinosaurs and therefore many dinosaurs would have ha had feathers. This idea doesn't quite fit with the prevailing pictures and models we have seen in our museums, movies, and even art. However, many scientists agreed with, with Xing that, and argue that their feathers may have been a common feature, especially on juvenile and smaller dinos, to help keep them warm. Can you imagine a T-Rex covered with feathers? Paleontology in China. When the government of China realized the fame and esteem that Xing's work was attracting the world stage, it put a little bit more emphasis on paleontologists in general. But there was a few problems. First of all, the country, unlike many others, did not have a National Museum of Natural History in which to display the many fossils that were found. Secondly, it was not a highly sought-after career. Finally, young people in China weren't very aware of the field of paleontology. The government tried to help by providing more funding for research building theme parks to bring interest, and making sure that museums had space for the new discoveries. Unfortunately, their efforts haven't been entirely successful. In the past seven years, Peking University has only had one paleontology student per year, and Beijing still doesn't have a museum of natural history to organize all their fossil histories into one place. Perhaps a larger problem faced this field in China is the black market for fossils. When farmers discovered that there was money in the bones they had found on their land, they began selling them to the highest bidder. That combined with robberies, smuggling, and even fossil forgeries has caused a lot of confusion and frustration for paleontologists in China. Scientists like Qing are trying to work with local farmers to explain the benefit of submitting them to research and finding ways to compensate or make deals with them. However, when private buyers will pay double or triple their annual income, it's kind of hard to say no. The government has responded with harsh and extreme measures, including making private sales of fossils illegal, threatening arrests and fines, and even blowing up mine shafts farmers were using to find fossils. 
Not everyone agrees with these actions, which have caused damage to fossils and ruined significant dig sites. Falsifieds or con counterfeit fossils have further confused the market. They are sometime, sometimes being made with a variety of small incomplete bones and skeletons in order to make a scale. Leonin Providence. Known for its lush farmland, the Providence of Leonin has become one of the most well-known bone beds in the world. What makes this place unique is not the sheer number of fossils, but rather their quality. It is here that some of the most remarkable, detailed, and complete fossils in the world have been excavated, including many that Sh Xing discovered and named himself. In fact, this is the very place that Xing first went to study <coughs> the, the Sinosaurotex, a dinosaur that, if you remember, was excavated by a farmer. There have been many feathered dinosaurs found here, as well as fossilized plants, animals, fish, and even insects. Because particles of ash and mud helped to preserve so many fine details, there have been even some soft tissue found, which has made it a popular place for scientists all around the world. Let's take a look, take a look at the few of the s species that were discovered here. Archaraptor, or it, is it? <clears throat> Do you remember how we learned about the fake fossils that have been a problem because of the black market in China? One such story is the Archaraptor. This little dinosaur made a lot of waves for a number of reasons, but in the end turned out not to be the real species after all. We have learned that a lot of mistakes have happened throughout history of paleontologists, and it is unclear if the person who put the fossil together wrongly did it intentionally or not. Yet the truth remains. The skeleton was c composite, glued together from multiple species. Unfortunately, it was sold to a dealer who turned around and sold it to the director of a museum for an exorbitant price. Before it had been fully studied and scientifically named, it was already being acclaimed as the missing link between birds and dinosaurs, as it was a blend of the upper body of a bird and the tail of a small dinosaur. This hasty pronouncement was unfortunate. It was quickly discovered to be fake, with no real connection between the upper body and the tail, and many more small discrepancies showed up the more it was studied. The questions were buried, perhaps because they were so much on the line, or maybe because people so badly wanted to be ha have it be real. Regardless of the reasons, National Geographic published an article that was later recanted when Xu Xing found the dig site and examined the evidence and proved without a doubt that the Archoraptor was not real. Xu Xing continued to work in the area and was able to find the rest of the dinosaur that went with the tail that had been found. This new little creature he named Mycoraptor, which was at the time the smallest and most bird-like dinosaur known, about the size of a crow. It had sharp needle-like teeth, walked on two legs like a bird, and was presumed to have feathers on its arms, legs, and tail. It had four wings and was thought to be like a flying squirrel, able to guide between trees and possibly even climb them. Its teeth suggest that it was a carnivore. Scientists hypothesize it probably ate small insects, worms, and even small rodents. There have been 10 different species found throughout China in the past 20 years or so. The Microraptor name means small thief. It was found in the Leonin Providence in China. It's carnivorous, about 30 inches long and 2 pounds. Named after <clears throat> the Lyceratops, named after the Providence it was found in, the Lyceratops was thought to be about the size of a jackrabbit. It was named by Xu Jing, and it is known as the smallest horned dinosaur found to date. A relatively new discovery, scientists are still studying the few skulls they have been that have been found and are using them to help determine what this dinosaur might have looked like. It, it had a developing frill or shelf similar to a triceratops, and a small sideways horn under each eye. With a 
beak-like jaw and flat and grinding molars, the Lyceratops was a herbivore like its Triceratops cousin. Since there have been no full skeletons found yet, scientists can only speculate to help piece together the full story. Small and agile, it is assumed that it walked on all fours, but would have been able to lean back on its hind legs to reach low-hanging foliage. Quick facts about him is the Leonine horned face. It was found in Leonine Providence, China. It's a herbivore, and it was about the size of a jackrabbit. Xu Jing, who is still alive at the time of this publication, is a man who keeps a low profile. When you search for interviews and publications, not very many come up. He lives a quiet life, focused on his family and his work, and even says that too much media is bad for business. A man who is committed to science, he was the one who wrote the letter to National Geographic, notifying them of the mistake, something that could not have been easy to do. Unlike some of the scientists of the past, he seems to be more interested in furthering scientific knowledge than growing his name. Because of this, he continues to work with farmers to build good working relationships with them to help reduce the number of fossils sold to the black market, which does not carry his same commitment to truth and accuracy. Counterfeit fossils continue to be a problem to this day, and diligence and careful study is now required in the field more than ever before. One thing is for certain, anybody wants to be a part of something like the Archoraptor scandal, Ever, no one ever, no one wants to be a part of something like the Archoraptor scandal ever again. And that concludes lesson 16 for today.